I've gone to Nashville twice. I uh, did a picture with Phyllis Diller in L.A. Uh, I was um, oh, in Albuquerque, uh, Raton, New Mexico, just down to Houston and here. Just one step ahead of I the sheriff. I have to go huh? to Nashville uh, <laughs> tomorrow evening and be there for three days and go to El Paso for a couple of days. And then after that I can go to Atlanta and then I hope to go get home for a while. I, every once in a while I'd drop by the house out there and spend the night and tell my wife the next time in the neighborhood I'll drop by and see her. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, when I used to rodeo, I lived out of a suitcase, and I feel like I've made the complete circle. I'm doing it again. Slim, of course, in Texas, we know you so well for so long. But uh, do people, when, when you start this drawl that you have, and I mean you've got a real West Texas drawl, do sometimes people wonder if you're putting it on? Uh, you know what? Uh, I've often wondered where in the heck... Uh, California never got a doggone draw like this, but I picked it up when I was rodeoing, you know. Um, I, um, I rodeoed for, oh, 27, 28 years, and every rodeo cowboy sounds like he just fell out of a cotton patch. And <laughs> a funny thing happens, I go to Texas and everybody says, well, now you was born down here, whereabouts, whereabouts are you from down here? Or if I go to Tennessee, they said, well, now, now you originally are from Tennessee, aren't you? Or Georgia, it's the same way. And it's a funny thing, if I, the farther south I go, the thicker my draw gets. And I don't mean to be that way, but I, I have a, a, something that when I get around them, I sound just like them. And everybody thinks I'm from their hometown. Did you ever give any thought to changing your image? In other words, did you one day look in the mirror and say, by golly, I'm not going to be slipping Pickens anymore. I'm going to be Clark Gable or, you know, somebody like that. <laughs> well, I kind of did change it a little bit. Um, when I first got the name Slim Pickens, I was about 100 pounds lighter. And <laughs> that uh, uh, was a little change. <laughs> but uh, no, heck, I've always uh, been happy being what I am. Um, I've never tried to impress anybody with... Um, my good looks or my smarts or anything like that and then I'm, I'm making a good living doing what I'm doing and uh, and I'm enjoying it I'm having fun since I got out of the army in 1944 I guess it was um, there hasn't been anybody ever made me do one dang thing that I haven't enjoyed doing <laughs> and uh, I've made a good living doing it. I raised my family, and um, I think uh, if a person can make a good living doing things they like to do, they must be doing something right. It's the name of the game, and you, not and have you're to aware. run over anybody to do it. Yeah, and uh, so that's course, the way it's worked. You started out in the business as a, a bull rider, a rodeo a, cowboy. Yeah, rode, rodeo. I. Uh, um, I was just about that close one time to winning the bronc riding at Fort Worth. Is that right? Yeah, I was sitting in the lead Who going to you? my last horse. Um, well, it was an old horse called Ham What Am that beat me. <laughs> going into the fence, um, and the whistle's ready to blow, and I know I got it win because he was a good bucking horse. And I thought, there's no use falling off now. He'll go into the fence at an angle like this, and he'll jump this way. So I leaned to catch him as he come out of there and he went the other direction. And when the whistle blowed, I was standing there holding the rein. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried to ride any of these uh, electric bulls, mechanical bulls? No, and uh, that's just half the story. I'm not going to try to either. You know what? 20% more people get hurt on those <laughs> mechanical bulls than get hurt on the real ones and get hurt worse. Shoot, I'll tell you what, if that guy operating the controls is just the uh, least bit sadistic he can kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you doing now with Nashville Palace? Oh, golly, I'll tell you, I'm having more fun with Nashville Palace. You know, um, I've been a country fan all my life, and to get to go back there and work with all these great country talents, Roy Clark, 
George Jones, Tammy Wynette, Jerry Reed, Hank Williams Jr., big old Ed Bruce, who I think is the greatest country songwriter in the world and sings a pretty good tune. And incidentally, he's going to be on NBC this fall on the Maverick series. He's going to be the sheriff on that. And, uh, oh, by the way, um, we worked with the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, too, on the show. It isn't all country. Uh, did, did one number back there, and we had the, the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders and um, uh, Hank Williams, Jr. And guess what they were uh, singing? Texas women, and boy, I mean, uh, <laughs> those cheerleaders, they're a pretty good example of Texas women. <laughs> Can I see we're cute girls. Are you kind of, <laughs> <laughs> are you kind of the country Ed McMahon, is that what you are? I'm the poor man's Ed McMahon. We had him on the show, too. I, he was my guest. <laughs> Well, Slim, uh, we're going to be watching for it, Nashville Palace. I'm watching for you. It'll be on Saturday night, uh, starting the 24th of October, following Barbara Mandrell. And I tell you what, it's a good show. I it's bet a, it is. It's a country variety show, but uh, it's not all country. We had uh, Roy Clark playing with the Nashville Symphony Orchestra, and we had Woody Herman on the show. Miss America. Oh, guys, we've got a good lineup. You just have surprises. to watch it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Slim, just keep on doing what you're doing, and uh, maybe they'll never know. Hey, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good to see we'll you. We'll see you down in Texas. You bet.